Matt four sub base. Houston's up two one. Looks like a solid break out of Boston. Obviously starting on the on the better side, so it's a little bit easier on the break. Houston's gonna try and take a route through P2 at the beginning. Spark gets a kill here. Now they have both top cat and top snow control, so it's very hard to keep, you know, on time for Yeez. So a number three is also there for the help uh, bottom server. So it's very hard for Boston to keep playing time there. He's able to get a kill and kind of finesse his life, but still, once again, they're not getting any time. Trays go down. Looks like they should get this kill in Spart. They do, so it kind of stabilizes. But once again, since they were able to kind of finesse their life, Houston is, um, or at least Spart. Like Spart's able to make some plays here where he gets a kill, brings two people back for him. Now the rest of his team can start playing uh, this time. This guy on old has no help, so now they can get this scrap time. And, you know, he was able to buy some time for his team. Uh, unfortunately, they don't get new like new spawns for P P2, but this is a situation where there's 16 seconds left on old. They can kind of soak this scrap, but also have free plays on uh, this next hill. Good kill on Prolude there. Once again, they're still they're still soaking time, so they're gonna once this time expires, trying to make a play together. Let's see what they try and do off old. Shawnee's holding his P5 for them. Number eight is gonna watch their pinch from this uh this dark area or this light area, sorry, because he's light. He's watching mid alley. But what they're gonna do is gonna try and break through this P5 side. So this is what you see most of the time. Uh, teams try and do. A breakthrough P5, one guy playing a lurker towards, you know, either long or through cat room here. Pro loot is going to jump out of this P5, but they also have help from this guy, Top Snow. And number seven, who's going to be close towards this window, is probably going to hop up right now. So he's looking to top up. He actually hops up to the cat. They know this guy is top P2 over here. This should be an instant kill and then can try and converge. Yep, they get the kill. Now they can try and converge on the hill. Only one guy on time because the other guy was Silos. He was worried about a possible P5 push into P2 plat. They break the hill. See if they can get another kill here. If this is a big kill on... Uh, who is it? I can't tell who this is. Okay, it was Pentagram. Big kill on Pentagram. Another big kill on Cami. Complete break. 45 seconds left. Now they can start soaking time. They know they're spawning in the back. They can just try and play for this in the back. Houston's playing the, these respawns so well right now. And they read the spawn too. Because they're soaking time. There's a possibility that they can make it spawn out here. White time. So he spawns actually in the back now. But they've like completely fit this. So what was supposed to be a Boston rotation win and hold it was a break in 45 seconds. Which rookie stands uh, out to you so far in the league? I mean, right now, I think rookie of the year has to go to Linz. Linz is playing pretty well in the matches, and they just got top four. So I don't know how you can argue really for anyone else right now. So they soak the scrap time. They're already taking routes towards old, or towards new, I mean. Number one's already towards his crates. Let's see if uh, Yeez is going to pick him up here. So Yeez sees him. Let's see if... Okay, that's a big, big rotation win. If he would have lost that, that would have been super big uh, positioning for, for Houston. But number four is there, like already pushed up, trying to help out the teammate that just got killed. Let's see if he can get this kill on Yeez, though. Yeez is just jiggling this, so really good plays by Yeez, but like playing this this way. Now he's going to ask for help, so he asked for help with number five, who's Pentagram. They're still trying to like bait this guy out, but number four is creating some really really big disruption because there's two guys kind of playing for him so let's see if Houston can break on in from the rest of this map they get these kills one guy is now coming from bottom or yeah bottom five uh, bottom p5 or control whatever you want to call it one guy's going to be jumping up top snow here so now they have a break from all three angles of the hill well I guess you don't have uh you know tunnels but you know top snow is just as good they're breaking for all sides since pro or since Spar was able to stay alive here because he was the one back crates. 
this is some really big plays. For them staying alive, they should be able to break this. They're, they're actually breaking this, but it's a weird situation where it's 2v3. But that, that, they made it at least somewhat mixy, so that was, that was decent. There was a possibility they could have broken, broken that hill. What are the best gloves to use? Um, depends on what, what uh, gun you run. So I guess if you're a sub, you run assault gloves. If you're, uh, what's it called? If you're an AR, you either run quick fix if you want like faster trophies, faster nades and stuff, or marksman. I don't think Gwyn has a, has rookie of the year on uh, like unlock yet at all. I think Linz is 100% more in contention as of right now, just simply because boss, or Minnesota got top four. But that was that was a decent break attempt out of as of Houston. But now you're moving into a situation where it's 14 seconds. This new P4 is a big money hill. So even though they they aren't able to flip out spawns, like them making it somewhat mixy is still kind of a win. There was a possibility they could have bro broken the hill, but now they're going to, going into the P4 where it's it's a pretty big money hill. I just don't like how they're playing this. I think I don't know they're playing super far out. And they're not playing, I would like at least one guy to be playing tight over, looking over long for, for number one here on time. So this is a situation where number one on time is just soaking time and that's it. He's looking long and that's it. The rest of the team is pushed out, but they're just dying and no one's getting a trade. And this guy is probably like, what the fuck just happened? You know, he's probably thinking, what the hell just happened with my team? Cause we were on a cool rotation. We should have been holding this hill. This is a big money hill. And now I have to like kind of look my cat i have to look my long i don't know where they could be coming from we get a kill towards p2 here but this should be a situation where they break up oh actually actually this is not bad because they they spawn right back up for this position so he's able to get this help before you know boss is able to converge on him so it could have been really sketchy honestly like the way that they played it with no trades out like in the open was kind of bad but the fact that, you know, Spart spawns out, or Spart still spawns here, which is, which is kind of, I don't know, I would say lucky because number five isn't able to block the spawn yet. Because once he gets here, he starts blocking, this guy spawns out. But if this guy got there like just an instant sooner, this guy spawns out as well. And they just break the hill. But number four is able to go to the screen tarp. That's what I was assuming they were going to do right off the start, is have one guy play the screen tarp with them just to make sure nothing, no funny business goes on. Uh, but they're able to hold that, so. This green tarp area is great for this P4. If you're an AR and you guys are holding this hill, you should, you should have one guy on this green tarp for sure. Hey, Dante the Beast, what's up, what's up? I missed subbase already in ranked. Oh, I forgot they took that shit out, so. Whatever. I hate to say it, but I feel Kenny's comms are better than JP's comms. 100%, dude. I don't play the game every day. I don't come every day. So 100%. What the hell? When is a good time to hit a pinch? Is it based off your spawn or map control? Uh, yeah, based off your spawn, map control, players dying. Like if your team's dying and you're hitting the pinch, that's not good. So you need to make sure if you're on the pinch, this is the biggest thing. If you're on a pinch, you need, you need to be making it known to your teammates to stay alive like you need to be saying yo yo stay alive stay alive I'm, I'm pinching i'm pinching if you can tell them to stay alive and they can just you know hold an angle not die at all just play their lives you are have a better shot at making the play and you got and you won't fuck them over with spawns because if they die and you're pinching you can flip everyone out so making sure on that's the biggest thing if you're making a play if you're making a pinch like that call out to your teammates to stay alive So they're still able to hold this. I honestly, like if this guy doesn't spawn in the back here, they, they get broken 100%. But the fact that they were able to get pushed up allowed that to happen where they could get spawned up. Like, or at least one guy could get spawned up. So maybe it was lucky, maybe it was on purpose, but they took a chow. By taking a chow, that allowed their team to spawn back up. So it was basically any, uh, it was basically a free play by being out there. So this is what um, a lot of people don't understand in terms of deaths 
So like these deaths, they look horrible, but if you know you're gonna be spawning out here, and this is the whole thing, you just need to know that you're gonna spawn in the back here. Number four dies like instantly, but the the death doesn't matter. Like the death, his death top three should matter, but it doesn't because he's just gonna spawn back up, and he's gonna get in the same position that he would have been if he's, he'd played that in the first place. So like it's a death on the scoreboard, but he gets two kills for it. They still hold the hill. Obviously, you, it's just a judgment call on if you think you're going to be spawning the back. Because if this guy was, you know, two seconds earlier and blocks the spawn, then he doesn't. But if you know you have that timing, then it doesn't. Then it's not a bad, bad play. In hindsight, it's it's actually not a bad play. If you look at a spawn, you block it. Um, a lot of times, yeah, line of sight. Did you do a review on Dashi's throw at the Mav game? Jesus, no. Should the other team be able to read him spawning behind fence? Um, actually, they should. Like, because they haven't, they aren't blocking it. They aren't blocking it in time. So if that person who is cat room and knows where he should be when it's going to be blocked, like if he knows I'm not in the position to block it yet, this guy could spawn in the back. They should know that. But that's only if that guy calls it out and knows that where he needs to be is going to be either blocking or not blocking. Like if he's going to be in that position where that guy spawns, like, cause you can look at your scoreboard, you can look at when the guy spawns. Obviously it's hard to do in game, but you can technically technically do it. Hey Tog, what's up? Thank you for some man. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Could the could he spawn deep left that they pushed up? What do you mean, like over here? Um I think I think so. I think there's a way there is a spawn over here. I'm trying to think of like when it happens. I think it's only if you're like I think it's only if you're like super deep or no, when is I think it's only if you're like in the front here. I'm not sure. We haven't gotten in that situation too much where you spawn over here, but I know this is a spawn. And then see, they, they give up the back. They're not blocking here. Like they start exiting. And now this opens it up for, for number seven. And they know, they know, like number one knows. Dylan Rex knows that he's spawning out here. Or he doesn't. He looks for it, but he doesn't see him or something. Let me see what happens here. Because he turns around. He turns around for it. Oh, he thinks he's going this way. So he looks for, he looks for this, but he doesn't look for this. So this guy just goes off a, a different way off spawn. He can smell him and he's going to fight his urges, but oh, could he spawn deep left? Oh, th that, th that's exactly what you're... Yeah. So this is what happens here. Where this guy spawns up. That's only if this guy's like pushed up into the server though. Like super pushed up. So that's, that's the thing you were, you were talking about. Yeah. So, but since they're not blocking server or anything, they'll, they'll spawn up in the back here. And they haven't got a kill, so. Since they're the first to die, they're going to be the first one to spawn up, and he spawns up here. Like, you could be blocking a, blocking a spawn completely, but if you don't get a kill for them to spawn out, then it doesn't, nothing happens. So since this happens where this guy spawns old, he wins the gunfight new, or when he wins the gunfight at old, uh, he's going to have scrap time. These guys already trying to take space towards P5 to help out this new rotation. If they hit Riverside, does this guy still spawn there? I think if they hit Riverside, I think that's what the situation where he spawns, they spawn over here in this corner instead. I'm pretty sure that's the situation where it is. I could be I could be wrong, but I have to I have to look at some bot again. It's like I thought I thought Breach were gonna make a little bit more of a fight towards that uh towards this rotation, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works though. It seems they're just they're comfortable with their breaks, they're relying on it. They're still White time that's a weird white time spawn, but they're holding this P five. Let's see if they even look towards the back. Because I don't think they're gonna assume this. So number two spawns in the tunnel and now he's gonna know that like some bullshit's going to have, or some something's going on. 
So fire looks for it once uh once number two spawns out. It's like you hear the comm come in or or you sound warm. I don't know. Pendergram gets the kill regardless. And now Boston's in a pretty decent position because you know they had those those spawns out over here. They disrupt a little bit. They buy some time the guy for the guys to get like positioning P2 and, and silo side. And now they should be able to break on the hill. Maybe not. Oh, big kills by Spart. And the trade here. So they're still sucking this P5, actually. I thought Boston was going to be able to have control. Well, now they get the trade there. Now Boston should have control. And they do. It's a good pinch by Yeez. Having top snow on P5 is, is really, really good. For P5, is it better to have Maze spawn or P3 spawn? Um, what's Maze? Oh, is this Maze for you? Uh, I think this this P2... You want P2 spawns for P5. If you can get P2 spawns... If you can get P2 spawns here, have a guy P2, have a guy on hill. If you get pushed up top snow, you should be winning the hill every time. Maybe you got top third watching server for anyone that might be like taking a server out trying to kill a guy on time. Still having top sir, top snow control. Top snow control is like everything on a lot of hills. Boston played that P5 to P1 well. Because if you have this side, it's it's much more favorable. Especially even for the P1 too. Look at this. They're just able to get kills. These guys have to take routes either through the tunnel, which is really annoying to do because they can be coming like... They can be watching you from top three. They can be watching you from time. So coming out of the tunnel, tunnel is really annoying, especially even if they have a guy P5 still or to add top snow. So like even though this guy is exiting tunnel, he could just get traded. But they, they kind of teamwork this well. Pro loot actually doesn't get the kill, but they do get trades on the hill at least. But they're just trying to get positioning towards P2, trying to disrupt it. Kind of what we saw in the... In the first P1, where you're disrupting through this right side, getting kills or getting like finesse, like trying to finesse in P2 or around top third to buy some time so that people off spawn could get this scrap time P1. But it looks like Boston's just continuing to hold this control even through like scrap time. This is really not good for Houston. So now this is this is a break. Everyone like a lot of teams trying to break through P5 towards the P2. So it's really important to cut. P5 on this rotation. So you see Shawnee looking at it. You know, number five is going to be looking at it. Number six is looking at it. They're all going to be cutting this P5 area because of uh, the possibility of Houston going through this route to try and get to P2. Trying to get to P5 or P1 from P3 spawns is such a dope check for me. Yeah. It's it's a dope check. It's not only dope, dope check for you. It's dope, dope check for, for everyone. Pros, amateurs. Like you... Try, trying to be in this position right here where you're spawning here and you don't have rotation P2 or you don't have like hill control P1 is very, very annoying. So that's why it's, it's very important on this side, like while you're playing this P2 side, to be making sure you have control of, you know, of control in P5 or top P5, low P5 is what, kind of what we're calling it now. This, this building we're basically just calling top and low P5. <laughs> and basically just calling this the tank. What do you think about number five spot right here? Um, I think it's good. I think top P2 is good. And then what he's doing right here is he's trying to get more positioning. He's trying to layer the map. Similar to what we saw before, but he knows if he can layer the map and buy some time for number eight to maybe try and help him, he's going to have time or he's going to have help from number seven and number six on the cross. So he can just get kind of free picks. It's like number three kind of evades him for a little bit. He gets the kill on number three. But he has, he has help from number six and number seven, or he should. Unfortunately, he doesn't have help there, but he does get a trade. He gets a help from, from the nade kill from Yeez, who was on time. So he's, he's pushing up the map, creating that layer. Even though he dies, look what happened. He bought enough time for number eight, who just spawned up, to be back in top P2 window. And what do you know? He's going to spawn in the back here too. And once, you know, once the hill pops, like, he can just get towards time with the rest of the team. They get these kills P1, huge kills, because once again, you're, all you need to do is cut P5 now. You know they're going to be trying to go through the P5. If they try and take a full route here at this time, they're kind of throwing. So they kind of have to bully out this. And then Yeez can get time off spawn because, you know, you don't want number eight running backwards to time when he has a really important cut 
of holding top E2 like this. This is a really important uh, distinction. So a lot of people in this situation, if they're number eight, you'll see right here. A lot of people in this situation, if you're number eight, you're going to time. I see a lot of rank play kids do that because they're just like, oh, I, I just need to get time for my team. Um, you know, I got to play OBJ for my team. This is a situation where you are in a very important cut and you do not need to be getting time. You can let number five get time off spawn. You know, that this five seconds is going to make a difference. But if you get like kills with number six towards P5, you're going to be soaking this entire hill. So this is a situation where I don't think you should get time. You should just keep playing this spawners. What's up, Tail Poppy? How's it going? So he, this is a good play. I think Cammy's making a completely the right play. You keep holding this with your teammate. Number five, all spawn can just get time for you guys. Let's see what happens. Let's see if they get rewarded. He gets a kill. He's actually got the two piece now. Number six can now get pushed up. He can go maybe top snow if he wants to. Cammy gets another kill. See, if he went to time here, if he went to time here, he doesn't get these two kills and they probably get broken. Because they, because uh, Houston just gets pushed up P5. They go up to the P2 plat and they break the hill. You know what I'm saying? This is why, this is why in a situation like this, it's not always like, oh, he's not playing OBJ. You, you fucking farm these guys P5. Sometimes you got to kill whore. This is a, this is a good kill whore play. I'll say that every fucking day of the week. Yeah. So, you know, he waits for number five to get time. Now he's just farming. Him and number six are just farming these guys coming out of P5. See if he gets another. He gets shots off. He can calm to him. Now he has t like now he has teamwork with P5. So now he doesn't even have to worry about like his side because this is pushed out by Yeez. Like this is a very good hold by Boston. Unfortunately, they just overrun this the side. I think number eight should be helping out still, or I think Cami should still be helping out P5. But they they should have number seven look towards the mid alley for anyone like going tunnels off spawn which they do so they kind of like are watching the same thing like at this point like once once number eight once cammy finally gives us up he goes to watch like mid here but number seven should just be watching that and he should just still be helping towards p5 and this guy number two goes under under yeast so that's unfortunate too actually no he gets his kill never mind but they get the trade off they kill cammy finally and now it's a possibility for them to break on the hill so, unfortunately, it's just, it was a mistake that happened later on. But the, you know, the kill whore player is definitely the play to make. Everyone in rank bangs out old with 10 seconds. LOL. <laughs> yeah. So, honestly, good break. Even though they were in a really tough situ situation, them getting the kill finally on, on Cami and, and getting pushed up in the P5 was the only way they, they were going to break. But look at this. They're still up 70 points, Boston Academy, and they're going to have new rotation because this guy's going to play safe. So let's see if his team can uh, can do something on here. Okay, so they don't, they don't break it. That was just a free play because they were going to spawn out in the back here anyway. And let's see, let's see what happens on this rotation. Number two on, on the same kind of uh, rotation that we saw earlier. I think it's I think it was Dylan Rex last time. This time it's Pro Loot. So he's already getting initial positioning crate side. Let's see what we can do. He maybe he can disrupt these last two guys on hill because they got the kills on the other side towards like mid map. Let's see if uh, let's see if they can get this kill on uh, on new time. I don't. They're not even looking for this guy, so this is very dangerous. And they spawn in the back here. So these guys are spawning out. They're spawning in the back now. And that's actually crazy. Now this guy's last live top snow. They instantly break this hill. So this is not looking good for Boston Academy at all. This should like this should be around tied, you know, 180 or 190 going into this this P4. But this is the lead that Boston built up for themselves. Like honestly, like they get broken on this, but now they have a chance to rebreak. And if they don't. Like break on in, they'll have the P4. Obviously now they're they're spawning out. This is really important for them to break now, because technically, um, if 
number three and number one had clutched this up and they you know started spawning parallel with these guys it would have been a big rotation to the p4 so they win this hill number seven spawns out parallel but he spawns out behind these guys so he gets a free kill on number one they squad spawn on him and now they just play super safe in the back here so these guys spawn back here at old you know that's fine they they made it mixy you know maybe it wasn't the best hold because obviously you know they got broken up right at the beginning but they made it mixy and now they have a rotation so as long as they're staying ahead with this lead so they're constantly winning the rotation that's one of the big things you hear in pro play is like you have that lead stay ahead with the lead stay ahead on rotation because eventually you know it's harder to break than it is to hold so they clear everyone they know everyone's dead four down in the past you know whatever 10 seconds they know everyone's spawned in the back this should be this should be the win here they went off new 201 to two to 159 they should win off this hill but they have a streak smart has a streak so sometimes you know the streaks happen this is a good kill to use the streak on cami kills or they kill cami on time now it kind of disrupts their setup where no one's on time but they stay they stabilize so big kills out of number six here who's this yeez yeez gets one kill side plat and then he gets another kill toppy two so he finesses this guy number three he finesses fire so he gets really big kills towards p2 over here now all they have to do on the boston side is look you know long and at this cat pinch this is the last guy alive so he's buying a lot of time for his team you know having this p2 control let's see if he, he doesn't look for pro loot that's a really hard route to like pick up obviously he's not expecting him to go you know jump off cat go dark and then pinch him p2 but they know his information now and now they're just playing super tight look at number seven number eight's positioning hey what's up hazard good morning good morning oh they removed snipers from ranked is that is that true they finally did it bet wait does this guy spawn back up here wait so he's starting to shoot right this guy spawns out where does number where does the red guy spawn oh my god he spawns right behind the building so i guess if you're if you're in front here you're you're technically not blocking or like maybe it's because you know what i think what it is i think it's it's got to be like numbers two's position because he's more behind the number seven i think i think it technically reads like number two is more behind than seven so it's squad spawns on him or some shit that's crazy but this should be a break on in now because that spawn they know this guy's spawning out a easy break <laughs> once once that happens so they get the scrap time and we're going to a we're going to a p5 so early positioning already towards p5 this is a good route by pro loot already cutting off people trying to exit out p5 or low p5 control they have one guy top snow this is really really good plays unfortunately you know boston does a good job picking it up for them so they're on they're on time already number eight just comes right out of the tunnel and can kill this guy out of time and they're using a streak so let's see let's see how the streak goes so they already break the hill without having to use the streak but he's going to use it for for good measure because he's already in it obviously so let's see if he can get the guy top p2 unfortunately he doesn't get it but they know you know last guy alive is top p2 and silos our last two guys alive And they're they're able to play some good trades. They get new spawns, so this is good for an eventual P1 if it has to go to there. But they should probably win off of this if they get a kill on number two here. So he gets the kill. Actually, they do trade it, so I didn't realize this guy was that close. Yeah, number three was actually close for the trade, so he can just look out the window, get this trade. So now it's gonna be kind of a trade battle into this P5. Big to get like, your nades on. Yeah, you know, once again, trade battle. So Boston once again regains control. So even though that trade happened, you know, that's kind of what I was assuming. Like Boston was still gonna win the trade battles based on their spawns. Now they're they're holding time. This is really hard to break. They have this guy playing close. This is a really you know ratty angle. They're covering him on time. They're reinforcing, and now this should this should be the game right here. You just kind of chokehold them coming out of this, this low P5. 
and Boston wins it. So good, good one out of Boston. Ties, ties the uh, series up.